Coming up on SportsCenter, San Francisco's Rags looks for riches and his first win as a starter, while the American League's first 11-game winner looks to come from the Lone Star State. In Oakland, a pair of A's go for number 25, while a pair of vets move on on the green grass of Wimbledon. The Dream Team loses one of its stars, while the Lakers hope to have landed a rising star. The Skins may lose their mark north of the border, and tragedy hits the NFL for the second time in a week. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Sports Center. I'm Dan Debenham along with Chris Myers. And Chris, this, of course, is normally the time and the place where we get all fired up to wrap up the day's sports, but uh, this time it's a much more subdued state that we start with. Stories like this uh, remind us all how precious uh, life is, Dan. Less than 48 hours after a runaway truck killed Lion offensive lineman Eric Andelsek, one of the NFL's top defensive linemen, lost his life in an auto accident. On the same day that funeral services were held for Andelsek, 27-year-old Philadelphia Eagles tackle Jerome Brown was killed in his hometown of Brooksville, Florida. Thank you for good time. Great friend. <laughs> no, for, uh, forget all the football. Great friend. Police say Brown died at 4.45 p.m. Thursday from injuries received in a single car accident near a Chevrolet dealership in the Florida coastal city north of Tampa. Brown was driving a Corvette, which reportedly skidded and flipped over. Also killed his 12-year-old nephew, who was a passenger in the car. It's hard to believe that it happened. Uh, you know, a lot of people can think what they want about Jerome Brown. But, you know, Jerome Brown was a for real person. Somebody that cared more than a lot of people thought he did. You know, you know sometimes I wish some of you guys could have seen him behind closed doors. Seen him with some of the kids and seen the love that was in his heart, but that's, that's not going to be seen now. Brown, who played five NFL seasons and twice went to the Pro Bowl, had emerged as the leader of the Eagles team. Not just the defense, the entire team. The 6'2", 295-pound tackle was the core of Buddy Ryan's defense. Ryan called him the best defensive lineman in the league. He said Brown wound up the Eagles on game day. For two years in a row for me, he played hurt all the time with a knee and a shoulder. And uh, the last game that I was there was a Redskin game, and he played where he couldn't even pick his arm up. And uh, he still played uh, because he's a team guy, and he uh, wanted to try to win the ball game. Jerome was thought of as a practical joker, even in his days at the University of Miami. In 1987, the Eagles drafted him with the ninth pick in the first round after he had five sacks against Penn State in the Fiesta Bowl. He had a tough exterior with a teddy bear interior. Brown had just held one of his free camps for kids. He often gave free agent players shoes and a place to stay. Last year, he had a new house built for his parents in Brooksville. Brown made his home in Florida during the offseason and was to be in Philadelphia next week before a tragedy struck and cut his life short. Anyone he, he, he came in contact with, he touched. He certainly touched me. And not to even mention his love for playing football. And he's going to be sorely missed. Two years ago, Brown helped save the life of a trucker by pulling him from an accident on a New Jersey highway. And in 1988, he was the driving force behind a fundraiser for an 11-year-old girl who was left in a coma because of an auto accident, ironically, in Brooksville, where Brown lost his life. Well, Chris, in light of the Jerome Brown tragedy, the rest of the day's sports seem trivial, trivial, I should say, at best. But nonetheless, the Astros were in L.A. Thursday night to meet the Dodgers. L.A. Happy to be home for the next 22 games after going 1-10.